Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the best weapon skin set you can use in Sea of Thieves. So basically, what you're going to be wanting to use when you are PvPing people in order for you to have the most kind of visibility and best chance at actually winning the fight. But before I get into the video, I'd like to quickly say that if you are new around here, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications because you don't want to miss a single video from me. I bring you all the best Sea of Thieves content, uh, guides, PvP videos, steals, funny meme videos, everything like that, anything Sea of Thieves related, so make sure you have those notifications on. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Kicking this video off, we're going to be talking about the cutlasses. Now, basically, the cutlasses are pretty simple in what you want to actually be using. Obviously, you want to stay away from any kind of chunky, big, clunky sword with loads of extra things which distract you. This is purely because if you're in a fight and you're blocking or you're trying to just sword someone, you don't want to be having all of these uh, visual effects going off on your screen. You don't want some big, clunky, chunky sword taking up half of your screen so you can't actually see anything. Thing, and that would just kind of distract you if you have a big kind of club swinging on your screen rather than a thin piece of metal swinging at your opponents, it would be rather distracting. So for reference, this is the Sailor Cutlass, the base cutlass that you get when you start out the game. Uh, you don't have to pay any gold for it, it is automatically given to you. As you can see, it's rather slim, it doesn't take up much of your screen, and something with, that looks somewhat like this will always be good in battle. So with that in mind, let's kick it off with the swords that you kind of want to use, the cosmetics which you will want to use in battle. Now, starting off, we're going to start off with the Sword of Souls, or the Seabound Soul Sword. I've made a video on this, so if you're interested in actually getting it, then just go and watch that. Uh, but yes, this one is very short, very skinny. It's often referred to as the Lightsaber, as you can see by its kind of appearance. Uh, it glows, it's blue, and it's small. Uh, it looks like a lightsaber. But uh, this one's good because it doesn't take up much visibility. Moving on from this, we have the Ruby Stinger Cutlass. Now this is very kind of simple. It looks a lot like the uh, Sovereign Cutlass. It's just reskinned. Uh, it's very slim, uh, quite long, but uh, it doesn't take up much visibility and it looks quite nice if, they, if that's something that you, uh, you care about. Um, yeah, this one, very simple. It doesn't take up much of your visibility. Next up is the Shining Pegasus Cutlass. Now this one is kind of 50-50. As you can see by the handle, it's a little bit clunky, but the rest of it is very, very skinny and streamlined. A bit like the uh, Sword of Souls. Uh, so yes, this one is not a bad one to use. A couple swords worth mentioning are the Eternal Freedom Cutlass, as also it is really short and kind of skinny. The Legendary Spirit Cutlass, which is, uh, is just really cool, is gold. Uh, it's just a reskin of the ghost one in a way, uh, but it's also very skinny and uh, doesn't take up much of your vision. And lastly, anything such as the Sea Dog Cutlass, the Rogue Sea Dog Cutlass, anything of this kind of uh, structure, you get the point, anything skinny is very good to use. The skins you typically want to stay away from for obvious reasons are the Ocean Crawlers. So the Deep Ocean Crawler, the Azure Ocean Crawler, the Normal Ocean Crawler, any of the Ocean Crawler cosmetics. The Soul Flame Cutlass, because obviously this one just takes up way too much of your screen with its uh, glowing stuff, so you can't really see a lot. So you want to definitely stay away from this. But other than that, if you're using something that doesn't take up much of your screen, you should be fine. So we're going to move on over to the flintlock skins. Moving on to the flintlocks, it's a rather simple, somewhat like the cutlasses. You just want to stay away from something which is clunky and chunky and takes up a lot of your vision, while also maintaining a good iron sight. So the iron sight is the part of the weapon you actually use to aim and see where your bullets are going to go. So you want to stay away from things which are too wide or uh, even too skinny, too small and rounded or something which is too tall so your bullets don't actually go where you're aiming. You want to actually have something accurate enough to show where your bullets are going. Starting with the flintlock skins you want to avoid, we have the Fearless Bone Crusher. Now, I'm not going to say a lot on this, I think it's very obvious. The iron sights are way too chunky, the bullets are somehow going off to the right of where you're aiming in, which makes no sense. It's just way too chunky, takes up too much visibility, and honestly, it just looks ugly as well, let's be real. So yeah, just don't use that. Next up, we're looking at the Parrot Flintlock. Now, don't use any of the variants. This is because the bullets actually go below where you're aiming. As you can see by me shooting at this target, the bullets are going below. It's also ugly and just takes up too much of your screen. So stay away from the Parrot Flintlocks. Next up, you're going to want to stay away from any of the Admiral Flintlocks. This is because the bullets actually go above where you're aiming. Even though your iron sight is, you know, a focused point, uh, the bullets are somehow going above. So you want to stay away from these Flintlock skins. Now lastly, I have this absolutely diabolical skin which you 
don't want to touch please 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 never ever use this flintlock skin it is the ghost flintlock skin the bullets go so high and to the right of where you're aiming it honestly makes zero sense i remember when i was using this in pvp i was like why are my bullets going so far that way when i'm aiming there just stay away from it please this this footage should be enough to convince you right don't be psychotic Anyway, moving on to the good skins. Now, this is basically anything such as the Ebon Flintlock. The Ebon Flintlock is actually just a reskin or their reskin of the Ebon Flintlock. Anyway, it's basically the same as the Mercenary Flintlock, the um, Cultured Aristocrat Flintlock, the Aristocrat Flintlock, the uh, Insider Silver Blade Flintlock. Any of those are there. All the same model, just reskinned. So they are actually really good and accurate Flintlock skins. Next up is any of the Sea Dog flintlocks. Now, these are actually very, very accurate. These are probably the most accurate flintlock skins that actually exist in the game. Uh, as you can see through this footage, they're actually very, very accurate. It's going exactly where the iron sight is pointing. So, if you want to use any of these in uh, PvP, these are definitely the go to most accurate skin cosmetics for the flintlock. Some honourable mentions are the Inky Kraken or the Normal Kraken Flintlock. They are also very accurate, as well as the Gold Hoarder one, which I don't know if you can get anymore, but the Gold Hoarder Flintlock and also the Dark Adventurer's Flintlock. This one, they are all very, very accurate and, so, and they are all very uh, usable in PvP. Moving on to the blunderbusses. Now, these are also very similar. They, these all follow the very same kind of traits in the fact that you don't want something chunky which interrupts your vision. Now, um, these are usually most of the time you're not going to be aiming down sight with the blunderbuss for more than a couple seconds at maximum. Usually you're just going to be quick scoping with blunderbuss. But if you are one of those players who finds it easier to actually aim down the sight for a couple seconds, then you're going to want to stray away from things which are very clunky and takes up visibility. Continuing from what I just said we're going to be starting off with the shining pegasus blunderbuss now i feel like this is pretty obvious uh, it takes up a lot of vision it's very tall kind of skiddy but also very tall um kind of just takes up a lot of vision it makes it weird to hold and personally i just feel uncomfortable holding it so uh, personally i recommend that you stay away from this and maybe go for something more streamlined next up we have the fearless bone crusher and uh yeah i have nothing to say about this coming up we have the triumphant and the glorious sea dog blunderbuss now these aren't chunky in a sense but they have this feather or this weird kind of lever on the right side of the screen which i find very very distracting and it almost it just it's uneasy on the eyes it doesn't look nice and it kind of at least when i found using it in arena it was disgusting to aim down sight with and i hated it Next up, we have the Silver Blade Blunderbuss. Now, this isn't too bad. It's rather, like, small, but also you have these extra added jewels and gems on the left side of the screen, which kind of just reduces visibility in the corners of your screen. Now, obviously, you're not going to need to see what's going down in the corner of your screen, but it is also nice to have that visibility and not have some random gem just shoved in your face. So I would also recommend staying away from this because it does take up quite a bit of visibility. Moving on to the blunderbusses, which aren't actually that bad, we have the Dark Adventurer. This is because it kind of feels like you're almost holding a cannon, but uh, there's no unnecessary things in your face. It's very kind of straight and streamlined. It's just very nice to hold and very nice to use. Next up, we have the Shrouded Ghost Hunter. Now, this is actually very clean, somewhat like the Dark Adventurer's one, in that it doesn't take up that much visibility. Some honourable mentions are things such as the Golden Legendary Blunderbuss or the Legendary Blunderbuss, also the Order of Souls Blunderbuss, but uh, let me not forget to stay away from the Soul Flame Blunderbuss. So lastly, we're going to be talking about the Eye of Reach skins, the Sniper skins, the last category. Uh, basically, this follows the same principle in the sense that uh, you just want to use something which is streamlined and small, doesn't take up your visibility, so you can actually see what you're aiming at and see if there's someone coming up uh, running at you. I'll have example of this uh, in a minute but uh, starting off we're going to be talking about the bad skins which you want to avoid now obviously once again the fearless bone crusher too chunky takes up 
over half of your screen it feels like and there's just way too much in your face so you can't actually see any of the bottom half of your screen you can only see what's what you're looking at and above and that's just terrible why would you want that in a fight next up we're talking about the ocean crawler the deep ocean crawler all of the ocean crawlers uh also they take up majority of your screen and you can't see anything uh much like the ghost uh eye of reach this also takes up so much of your screen it's also distracting with all the glowing and floating bits it's also it's just disgusting don't use the 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 uh, ghost eye of reach likewise you also have the x marks to spot and the launch crew eye of reach which only will be available to to a select few of you watching this video as you can't get them anymore but things like this they also just look at it there's so much on your screen why would you want that you can't see anything so the main thing about all of these eye of reaches is that you want to have visibility you don't want to have something which takes up over half of your screen so we're going to move on over to my ship now and show you examples of these on my ship as you can see here from the middle deck on the sloop, you actually can't see the bottom at all when you're holding these chunky snipers. Uh, and this is obviously very important if you're on someone's ship and you're trying to guard some holes or guard the water. You're going to want to know if they spawned down bottom or not. But if you can't see that, how are you going to know? This is the most important reason why you want to have skinny snipers so you can actually see if someone's coming from the bottom of the ship or just if someone's in that bottom portion of your screen. Obviously, in contrast, if you pull out a skinny sniper like the legendary sniper here, you can see the bottom of your deck just fine. Even with one of the little bit chunkier snipers, the triumphant sea dog sniper, you can still see the bottom of your deck sniper skin there you're also going to want to use is any of the build rat ones these are so skinny they're so small I, I think they're probably the smallest sniper skins in the game as you can see here it just gives you so much visibility and it also just feels kind of cool to shoot because it feels like you're shooting something so small but it's so powerful it just it has this weird dynamic to it the Kraken and the Inky Kraken snipers are also very similar in their design. They have, they're have they a little bit more chunky, but uh, they're also very, very streamlined. And this is what I used before I got any of the legendary Sea Dog weapons. And lastly, something to mention is any of the aristocrat, cultured aristocrat, mercenary, uh, obsidian, whatever the, the obsidian six pack I've reached is called. I don't know what it's called because I don't have one. But um, any of those, obviously, they're all reskins of the same model. They're very streamlined and skinny. The silent barnacle one, which I currently use. Uh, oh, my God, that voice crack was disgusting. Anyway they're all very good so that about wraps it up for this video uh if you want to take anything away from this like 14 minute video uh, i don't know how long it's actually been but uh just just know this stay away from clunky designs keep visibility as wide as you can the more visibility the better why would you want to hinder your visibility just for a cooler looking skin it's not worth it in my opinion because you're just going to start losing fights and you're going to be like oh if only i could have seen him there well change your damn skin and you'll be able to see more you know that makes sense to you it makes sense to me Anyway, that about wraps it up for this video. If you aren't already, make sure to join my community Discord. There's nearly 7,000 members over there, and uh, I enjoy talking to all of you, hearing all of your feedback. You also get involved in videos, you give input in videos, you look at my thumbnails early, all of that good stuff. You just you're more involved in this channel and the community, and I just it's just amazing. So make sure you join that. Links in the description. It should have also popped up on screen a second ago, uh, but yeah. Also, just make sure you're subscribed, you're up to date with all the videos, as I said earlier, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.